Good morning, boys and girls. I'm glad to see you this morning. Let's begin our morning today by saying God is so good. God loves me so, and God answers prayer. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. He ans uh, answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. He loves me so. He loves me so. He loves me so. He's so good to me. And God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to save us from our sins. And we're going to hear about how God told about that many, many years ago. And God always keeps his promises. So let's sing Trust and Obey. And if you remember the motions, do them with me. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Let's do it again. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Now, boys and girls, you know, we've been hearing messages that God sent to his people from the prophets. And last week we had one from Isaiah that he had a warning for the people. And he also had a happy promise for them, too. But it's a promise of hope. And this week, we're going to hear a similar thing. We're going to hear the um, the warning that they have, but a promise as well, and a, and a promise for you and me as well. And so we're going to look at Isaiah again, Isaiah chapter 7. But before we do, let's bow our heads. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, Thank you for your true word, the Bible. We just thank you, Lord, that you teach us how you want us to live through your word. And we ask that you would help us to be good listeners to your message today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys and girls, in Judah at this time, you remember the kingdom had split into the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. Well, we're looking at Judah again, and the kingdom of Judah, uh, the king there was Ahaz, and he was a very evil king. He did not follow God's law, and he led the people to worship idols and to give offerings to idols, and he did not worship the one true God, and we know that brings problems. Well, when he was um, the king... The king of Israel, now, of the northern kingdom, he had made a deal with the king of Syria, and they had agreed to protect each other in battles. Well, one day Ahaz heard that these two kings, the king, the king of Israel and Syria, were leading armies that were going to come to attack him, that they were going to um, uh, come and attack Jerusalem, and Ahaz was very afraid, and so were all the people of Judah. But God said, do not be afraid. He sent a messenger. He sent Isaiah with this message. He sent Isaiah and Isaiah's son. And God's message for Ahaz was this. Pay attention and be quiet. Trust God. That's why we sang trust and obey. Because our God is trustworthy. He always keeps his promises. Be confident that God will take care of you. Yes, they will come. 
and they, um, the kings of Israel and Assyria, they are planning to attack Jerusalem and make someone else the king. But this won't happen, God said. If, but if you do not trust me, you will not last. So God was given a warning, but he was also giving them hope. And so God spoke through Isaiah, and he said, ask me for a sign. I'll give you anything, any kind of sign you ask for. They could have asked for these big armies and all kind of things, but Ahaz thought he knew everything. And he thought, instead of remembering what all the way back to King David, that God had promised that he would be with his people, uh, Ahaz did not. Ask for a sign, but God said, I'm going to send you a sign anyway. And this sign is that a virgin will give birth to a baby named Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Well, Isaiah told Ahaz that very soon those kings of Israel and Syria would not be a threat to Judah anymore. And he didn't have to worry about that. But Isaiah continued with a message from God. God's judgment would come because the people, Ahaz and the people of Judah, were refusing to repent. And remember what repent means. It means that we tell God we are sorry and that we want him to come into our life. And that's what God was uh, trying to tell the people. If you will repent and turn to God, you would be saved. But he said, you have not seen judgment like you will have. This, this war that you're worried about, it'll be nothing compared to what's going to happen. On that day, God will send armies of your enemies to Judah. The Assyrians will come from the north, and the Egyptians will come from the south. And the southern kingdom will be defeated. Because, boys and girls, there are always consequences to sin. And you remember we've been told in Romans 3.23 that we are all sinners, for all have fallen short of the glory of God. So that means that it's necessary for all of us to repent, to tell God, yes, I know I'm a sinner, and I want to confess, Lord. I want to tell you that I'm sorry, and I want you to come into my heart. And so God promised that one day, a virgin would give birth to a baby. And we can look all the way into Luke chapter 2, which was many, many years later. The angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never come to an end. And another name for Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is our Emmanuel, God with us. Just as God had promised, if they would just listen to him and repent of their sins, that he would take care of them. But they refused to do this, and there are consequences to sin. But boys and girls, Romans 6, 23 tells us if that um, the wages of sin is death. But guess what? There's good news. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means that if we repent of our sins, and say we're sorry. God will send Jesus. Jesus will come to live in our hearts and be our manual, God with us every day, every step of the way. There's a chorus that I love to sing that um, says, I serve a risen Savior. That's talking about Jesus. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever anybody else could say, whatever men may say. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. So I can tell people that. 
Can you tell people that today? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Remember, we've said there are three, way, three things we need to remember. A, admit that we are sinner and that we need a Savior. Believe, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, that means not die, but live forever and ever with Jesus in heaven. And the C is confess. Tell everybody that you are a child of the King. You are a, a Christian because you have asked Jesus to come into your heart. So I ask you today, have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Is he Emmanuel in your life? God with us? If you can say Jesus is your Emmanuel, that means that you've asked him to come into your heart and that God is with you. And that's why I wanted us to sing God is so good. So I want us to, before we have our prayer time, I want us to sing Jesus loves me because that's why God loved us so much that he sent Jesus. And Jesus loved us so much he was willing to die to take your sins and mine. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. So what have we learned about God today? He's loving, he's kind, he gives you second chances, just like he tried to give Ahaz and the people of Judah. He was giving them a warning and telling them all they had to do was repent. And that's what he's telling you and me as well. He's kind and loving and patient, but he's a just God too, and he's a judge, and he will punish sin. He's trustworthy. He always keeps his promises, just as he had promised the people that many years ago with David that he would be with them. He was trying to tell Ahaz, listen, God will be with you if you and the people will turn and trust him. And so we learned today that we need to trust God, Emmanuel, God with us. So let's have our prayer time now. This is our popcorn praise time. And we want to praise God. We got lots to praise him for. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear God, I praise you that you are always with me, Emmanuel, God with me. You are kind. You are loving. You are just God. You are God of second chances. You give us warnings just as you did the people of Judah. And you give us a nut chance over and over to come to you and repent. We praise you as our Savior who died to save us from our sins, our Redeemer that brought us back from sin. You are sovereign in control of all. You're trustworthy. You always keep your promises. And now, boys and girls, let's close as we love to thank God for what he did when he sent Jesus to die for our sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, 
forgiving to me thy great salvation so rich and free and now boys and girls i want you to think about this this week i want you to think about repenting if you've not asked jesus into your heart repent that means turn completely away from sin and ask jesus to come into your heart and be your savior have a wonderful week